ఓకే నా హలో గాయస్ హవ్ యూ ఆల్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ శ్వేత ఆదిల్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఆదిల్ వెన్నెల గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ప్రమీల గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ప్రమీల సన్నీ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ టీవీడీ బీస్ట్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ హవ్ ఆర్ యూ ఆల్ గాయస్ ఇట్ హాస్ బిన్ ఏ వీక్ సిన్స్ ఐ హ్యాడ్ ఎ డిస్కషన్ విత్ యూ ఆల్ రైట్ so i hope you have revised uh, the previous classes right i want all of you to tell me that at least you have revised the previous class or or from the notes which you have prepared uh, prepared right i'm fine sunny thank you so much how are you hi shreya good evening shreya silam shubhash good evening motive things good evening good evening motive things revised very good vanilla I, i hope all of you have revised right and today guys today we shall be discussing uh in the previous classes we have discussed till the muscles of the forearm right uh, so in today's lecture we shall be discussing the muscles of the hand you know the intrinsic muscles of the hand and really they are very difficult and what is more difficult than that is the nerve innervation you know we have got the major nerves like radial nerve median nerve ulnar nerve right so how are they passing their course is really very difficult and the third most difficult thing is that at which level injury happens what happens i mean how does a hand look what are the gestures right so for example if there is a cut here if there is a cut here so it would be really difficult but don't worry i want you to pay full attention as usual as usually online school hi hi smu <clears throat> so guys uh shall we start shall we start so look here guys previous class we have revised regarding the muscles here right so we have also discussed i hope you are also following the clinical points isn't it clinical points are very important guys because in the upcoming exams clinical is the only thing that they are going to ask you that's it fact based questions are gone what are the most commons what are the least commons what is the first most common what is the second most common these things are gone now everything will be clinical okay so twin neck deformity jersey finger baseball finger mallet finger i hope all of you have revised this right so can anyone tell me okay i'm closing this can anyone tell me if there is if there is a rupture of the tendon here on the flexor region so what kind of finger do you call it as koi baat nahi sunny koi baat nahi beech beech mein hum hindi bhi bolenge theek hai very good shreya it is very good saikat paul very good very good it is called as jersey finger right the same way if it is on the back it is called mallet finger right if it is on the back it is called as mallet finger right no worries about that very good so shall we start guys shall we start discussing now we shall start discussing we shall start discussing with the cubital fossa are you all ready yes or no i need a green signal so that let me i'll start it let me yeah right so let's get started guys very very interesting topics we shall be discussing today right i want you to focus i want you to give your 100% attention to the lecture which i'm teaching okay right so when i come to the cubital fossa cubital fossa is always a question that is asked cubital fossa is always a question that is asked in the exams cubital fossa is very important for your exams okay so when when i discuss about cubital fossa first important thing they will ask you is that what are the boundaries of cubital fossa what are the contents of cubital fossa okay and what are the structures that are related to it now all of you look here this is your humerus okay what is this this is your humerus next important thing is that exactly here where there is an injection site right so exactly here this fossa which you can see here here this is called as cubital fossa okay so let me draw that cubital fossa first so this is your humerus right and next important thing is that if you have revised the muscles previously which i have taught i told you what is the common flexor origin common flexor origin is medial epicondyle common extensor origin is lateral epicondyle 
so from medial epicondyle the first muscle which we discussed which was going like this right it is responsible for pronation do you remember that guys i want your reply what is that excellent very good very good it is pronator teres very good gohita very good it is pronator teres and in the same way in the extensor also we have discussed the first muscle in the extensor compartment what is that look here brachioradialis brachioradialis is the first muscle right so look here now let us say all of you look here now let us say that this part is medial epicondyle okay this part is lateral epicondyle now from the medial epicondyle there is a muscle i told you which comes all the way like this right so this muscle you call it as pronator teres pronator teres okay next important thing is that there is also another muscle that is coming from the lateral epicondyle it means the extensor point so this muscle you call it as brachioradialis right all of you know that this is brachio radialis right now you can see a triangle that is formed right you can see a fossa that is formed this fossa here is called as your cubital fossa so question number 1 what are the boundaries of cubital fossa the first important thing is that the boundaries of cubital fossa are three from lateral epicondyle till medial epicondyle if i am drawing an imaginary line right if i am drawing an imaginary line from lateral epicondyle to medial epicondyle this is called as the base of the cubital fossa next important thing is that this line which i am drawing towards the pronator teres this forms the medial border of cubital fossa because it is towards the medial epicondyle the another line which i am drawing like this this forms the lateral border of cubital fossa so what are the three borders of cubital fossa one is called as the base another one is called as the pronator teres which forms the medial border pronator teres forms the medial border okay next brachioradialis forms the lateral border so medial border lateral border base we are done with our first question borders of the cubital fossa now contents of cubital fossa what are the contents are look here guys this is your biceps muscle right if you if you palpate inside you can feel a tendon in the uh, cubital fossa right that tendon is nothing but the tendon of your biceps muscle tendon of your biceps brachii okay that is your tendon of your biceps brachii so whatever it is how do you remember the contents contents are remembered in this way guys remember it as r remember it as r tan from lateral epicondyle till medial epicondyle remember it as r tan what does r stand for r stands for radial nerve r stands for radial nerve okay this is r r stands for radial nerve next what does t stand for T stands for tendon of biceps brachii. So this is this is your biceps brachii. This is your biceps brachii, right? So biceps brachii has got a tendon, and this is called as a tendon of biceps brachii. Third important thing is A. A stands for artery. What is the artery here? Can anyone tell what is the artery? Yes, very good, Ubay. Very good. What is the artery, guys? very good dr lipun very good so we have got an artery in the center this is called as a brachial artery you know brachial artery will divide into two branches this is called as a radial branch this is called as an ulnar branch i mean the radial artery and ulnar artery right so brachial artery is dividing into radial as well as ulnar and finally n n stands for a nerve what is the nerve again we have here this is the median nerve what is this this is the median nerve so if i am writing all of them down here if you can look at this picture right so this is your brachioradialis this is your pronator teres right and this one is your radial nerve radial nerve and this one over here is your tendon of biceps tendon of biceps brachii okay and this one over here is called as your brachial artery brachial artery and finally this one is called as a median nerve median nerve so from lateral to medial these are the structures which are present all of you are clear with this guys are all of you are clear with this
अंडरस्टर्ड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एक्सलेंट सो लेट एस मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन गाइस द नेक्स्ट वन इज दैट दिस वॉज अ क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज प्रीवियसली आस्ट वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन हियर इन द क्यूबिटल फोसा इफ यू कैन लुक एट द क्वेश्चन हियर लेट मी जूम इट आउट लिटिल बेट राइट इन द क्यूबिटल फोसा विच स्ट्रक्चर इज मीडियल मोस्ट दिस वॉज अ प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन विच इज द स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज मीडियली लोकेटेड मोस्ट मीडियली लोकेटेड वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर एनी वन very good most medially that is located is median nerve most medially if there is a structure that is located that is your median nerve very very good okay now let us go on to the next thing coming on to the muscles of your hand okay now when i am discussing the muscles of the hand keep in mind one thing all of you look here when i am showing this like this right when i am putting my palm like this here you can see an elevation here right so all of you don't write anything only if you see me you can understand this you can see an elevation over this is called as thenar eminence below that you can say another elevation below the thenar so you call it as hypothenar this is called thenar this is called as hypothenar okay so the first group of muscles which we have is thenar muscles thenar muscles next we have got hypothenar muscles hypothenar muscles okay so we have got two groups of muscles one is called as thenar another one is called as hypothenar now when it comes to thenar when it comes to thenar i want all of your attention look here now first important thing i am able to move my thumb away from my body you see i am able to move my thumb away so when i am moving it away this is called as abduction this is called as abduction when i am moving towards my body this is called as adduction so right now i am doing abduction so the first muscle the first muscle is abductor abduction of what the thumb finger thumb is called as pollicis and this muscle is small because it is located in the thenar region only so it is called brevis abductor pollicis brevis second important thing next important thing is that i am able to flex my thumb i am able to flex it so it means the muscle will be flexor pollicis brevis flexor pollicis brevis third important thing third important thing is that i am able to count my fingers i am able to count my fingers how am i counting my thumb is going against each finger it is going opposite of each finger right this is called as opposition this function is called opposition right so the the muscle here is opponens pollicis opponens pollicis opposition of pollicis is called as opponens pollicis and fourth important thing is that as i told you my finger can be adducted right my finger can be abducted like this the same way my finger is also adducted towards my body right see abduction adduction abduction adduction right so this muscle is called as adductor pollicis adductor pollicis this is called as adductor pollicis are you clear with the thenar muscles my main intention is for the first second and third year students i want you to understand it so clearly right have you understood guys is this thing clear everyone be fast very good very good very good i don't understand why few students joined uh, maybe is there any other class going on there right whatever it is coming to hypothenar muscles now when i will be discussing hypothenar muscles look here look at the little finger little finger in latin you call it as digiti minimi okay now i am moving my little finger away from my body so this is called abduction of little finger right so can i call it as can i call it as abductor digiti minimi not pollicis brevis this is digiti minimi digiti minimi abductor digiti minimi and after that the second important muscle i am able to flex my little finger it means the muscle which is working here is flexor digiti minimi flexor digiti minimi okay next important thing is that i am even able to touch my thumb finger my thumb is here i am able to touch like this right it means 
opponent's function is working opposition is happening here so the muzzle will be opponent's digit minimi opponent's digit minimi and there is a small muzzle here that is called as palmaris brevis that is called as palmaris brevis have you understood all these muzzles guys yes yeah you have understood thinar muscles you have understood hypothenar muscles so these two muscles are only little bit difficult but remaining all the muscles are easy okay right next group of muscles which we have are we have got some muscles in the center here these muscles are attached to tendons right these muscles are called as lumbrical muscles okay these muscles are called as lumbricals i will show you i will also teach you the origin and insertion don't worry about that okay so these are called as lumbricals how many lumbricals we have got we have got four lumbricals lumbrical number 1 lumbrical number 2 lumbrical number 3 and lumbrical number 4 in the same way in the palmar region also between the two bones you know these are called as metacarpals metacarpal 1 2 3 4 5 in between the metacarpals we have got muscles in between the metacarpal bones we have got muscles so i have to call it as interossei in between the bones so i have got two types of interossei one on the palmar side one on the dorsal side right so four on the palmar side four on the dorsal side so you you call it as you call it as palmar interossei palmar interossei next you also call it as dorsal interossei dorsal interossei okay so two groups of muscles palmar interossei as well as dorsal interossei okay again how many how many palmar and how many dorsal interossei we have got 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 that's it we are done with the muscles of the hand clear i will be telling you about each and every muscle right now so regarding the nerve supply i'll be telling you right now but have you understood whatever i've taught now till here before i go to the next one be fast guys be fast yeah very good now look here coming to the nerve supply coming to the nerve supply look here very 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 carefully regarding the nerve supply all of you look here all of you the first three muscles in the thenar region in the thenar region the first three muscles of your thenar region the first three muscles of your thenar region are supplied by median nerve are supplied by median nerve and in the lumbricals also the first two lumbricals are supplied by median nerve okay so how many muscles see here 4 4 4 4 4 i think 20 muscles are there right out of all these 20 muscles how many muscles are supplied by median nerve in the thenar region we have got abductor pollicis brevis flexor pollicis brevis opponens pollicis in the lumbricals first lumbrical and second lumbrical so these are the muscles which are supplied by median nerve remaining all are supplied by ulnar nerve keep that thing in mind okay so i'll write it as other than lo right other than lo muscles lo muscles means don't think what is this different type of muscle whatever i've shaded it in lo muscles so those are the lo muscles so other than lo muscles all other are supplied by ulnar nerve ulnar nerve whereas lo muscles are supplied by median nerve median nerve so this thing you just have to clarify within your mind right now clear thank you ujas khan thank you so much i'll start thorax immediately after this okay don't worry about that so i hope you understood it right next important thing next important thing is that love you ashish love you too next important thing is that within the thenar group within the thenar group we have got a fourth muscle can you see here what is this fourth muscle guys adductor pollicis obviously adductor pollicis will be supplied by which nerve ulnar nerve only right adductor pollicis is called as graveyard of ulnar nerve why it is called graveyard of ulnar nerve i will tell you after 10 to 20 minutes later okay but just now remember this as this is called as graveyard of ulnar nerve most of you might have already known but for those of you don't know 
I will tell you later on. Okay. Adductor pollicis. This is a question which was asked. Adductor pollicis is called as the graveyard of ulnar nerve. Okay. So, so, so this is the important thing you have to remember. Next important. Next important thing is that what are the functions of thenar muscles? I have already told you. What are the functions of hypothenar? I have already told you. Now let us enter into the functions of lumbricals, palmar intrashe as well as dorsal intrashe. Okay. Right. Coming to lumbricals. When I will be discussing regarding the lumbricals, when we discussed the forearm in the previous class, in the previous class we have discussed forearm. I have told you two muscles are there, right? These two muscles are having four tendons each. And these four tendons, one muscle tendons gets attached to the middle phalanx, other muscle tendons get attached to the distal phalanx. What is this muscle now? Tell me. Yes, I am waiting for your comments. You remember this thing guys here? You remember?